This form can be produced in Grasshopper using the Voronoi algorithm. We will have to do some more work. We will have to offset the Voronoi curves. We will have to use some fillet and we will have to extrude this whole 2D pattern so we get this three-dimensional form. There are some details to be observed and the major issue is that the offset of the curves is done via the Python component. Let's switch over to Grasshopper and see how this works. The first thing we need in Grasshopper is a curve that represents a rectangle which confines our later 3D object. Now we will populate this rectangle with a random array of points. We use the populate 2D command for this. As you can see, there are some points dispersed on the zero level, but we of course want to have them inside this rectangle. So what we're going to do is to connect the curve component to this R input. And now you can see we have this random array of points. Let's change the point number to something different, like for example, 175 connected to N. And now let's produce some Voronoi polygons with these points as a basis. And just so that we take this basic Voronoi component, connect P to P. Now, as you can see, the Voronois are surpassing the borders of the rectangle, but as you can also see, we have this B input, which is for boundary. And we can, of course, take the rectangle, which is this curve and plug it in. So we have a confinement for our polygons that are produced by the Voronoi component. Actually, this is all we got to do for the Voronoi thing. If you change the seed, you can have another Voronoi pattern. Let's just try this out, zero to let's say 10. And as I said, each seed value yields another pattern, which is quite interesting. We will leave it at one because this was the default value and we keep it like that for the time being. What we want to do is to offset the curves. There are some commands for doing this. It's all in the curve tab, like utilities offset curve. I won't try these methods out because they just don't work to our satisfaction. In this video, Junichiro Horikawa I hope I pronounced it correctly, produces three methods to offset curves. And the only method that really works is writing a Python component and using this for offsetting the curves. And this is pretty intriguing because it's actually pretty simple and it's very elegant and it does the job quite right. Let's produce a Python component. It's in the math tab, script, Python script. Here we are. So the code needs variables and actually X and Y are pretty unspecific. So we want to change this to something different. The command we will use takes three variables into account. The first one is the curve. The second is the direction. And the third one is the distance. Let's call this one CRV for curve. Let's call this one DIR for direction. This is uh, actually directly taken from this video I just mentioned, but it makes sense. And let's use this for this. So direction, distance, and curve. What we don't need to do is to specify the type hint. Let's connect the respective inputs. First of all, the curve is obvious. It's the output of the Voronoi component. And of course, it's a set of curves. It's not just one curve. So we connect it to this input. The direction is coming from the center of the Voronoi cells. So we have to actually find the center points of the Voronoi, which is not the points that we have up to now, as you can see. So there's a component for that. It's called area. And area component gives us a center point for each cell. We connect it to DIR. Now for the distance, we need a value, of course, and the value is best delivered by a number slider. So we produce a number slider. Let's say we use 0 0.001 up to 0 0.3. We connect this to the distance. Now we actually have to write the code. So we have to click on this. This is the template for Rhino Python. The Rhino script syntax is already imported. So we can just use some of the commands. Actually, this is exactly one. We have to define the output variable, which is A. We set it to rs.offset. And you can already see that offset curve is highlighted. So now 
you have to put in brackets the variables that we already implemented in this component, which is curve, dire, and this. Let's test it. It works. Okay. Now you can enhance the radius and you see there's some pretty decent offsetting going on. Now, as we saw in the beginning, we want to fillet these corners so that we have nicely rounded shapes. The command is fillet and fillet takes curves. Remember our output of the Python script is A, not out. So we connect A to C and we also need some kind of value. Again, we perhaps we just take the same slider, we just copy it and connect it to are. Now you see there's a little fillet going on. And actually I want to use some higher values just for having more freedom in my design. We just switch off the preview for this one and you see the result, the fillets. Okay. There are some minor problems to be solved. And the fillet is meant to be rather constant. I didn't mean to have a radius like this and this, and then a very small radius like this one in this corner. Let's switch on the result of the Python script, which is this one. The problem is here, like this corner. This is much too small and this leads to very strange mutations of our fillet radii. So this is nothing we want to keep. There's a component that helps us out with this and it's called curl duplicate points. And this curl duplicate points is to be found in the vector tab point curl duplicates. And what this curl duplicate component allows is to unite points that are very near to each other. It deletes duplicates and keeps the original, but it has a tolerance input. And you can set this to 0 0.1, for example. And so every two points that have a distance of 0 0.1 units are merged into one point. The thing is we have an output of curves and not points. So we have to do something about that. Let's use a text panel for seeing what we have here. You see we have polyline curves and no points, but curl duplicates needs points as input. So what we're going to do is to find the points in this polyline curve. A very nice component for doing this is curve analysis discontinuity. Now we have a set of points. We connect these points to this curl duplicates and you can see how curl duplicates solves our problem. It unifies those two points to this one. Okay, now that we merged duplicate points, we can use the polyline component to produce new Voronoi cells, spline polyline. And now we can take a look. We have situations like this cleaned up and it's now looking like this. This is okay. The rest looks pretty like it was before. So this is good because actually we want to keep this Voronoi pattern. We can enhance this tolerance value, but it changes this pattern quite a bit when we do too much of it. So now this polylines replace the output of the Python script. And as you can see, we didn't close the polyline. So of course we have to change this to true. Now they are closed. Now we can connect it to the fillet, switch the preview on and this one off. Now you can see we don't have the sharp edges we had before. Now actually this fillet radius is much too huge so we can turn it down a little bit. This is much better. I would like to solve this problem. We have a certain distance between the polygon openings but it's not exactly the same as the distance between the outer polygons and the rectangle. So what we could do, we could take all the Voronoi holes and scale them down a little bit so this distance becomes a little bit bigger so it looks more like this distance. So how do we do this? We take the transform affine scale and u non uniform scaling. Why non uniform? Yeah, because I don't want to scale it the same in x and y direction. It uses the geometry as an input, which is my curves. The z scaling has to be zero. And for the x and y scaling, we use a number slider. We use two of them. So we have to take like 0 0.9 to 1. And we copy this one, we connect this to x and y, and the plane should be the zx plane, because actually what we see in our front window is the zx plane. So let's go to vector plane, zx or xz, and plug it in here. So now you can see it's scaling this whole group of Voronoi openings, but actually it's not using the correct center for the scaling. I need the middle of the rectangle. Let's use an area again, analysis area, and use the curve, which is the rectangle, and use the center as the input for our plane. And now you can see the scaling is going correctly. Let's switch the preview of our 
original polylines off and do the scaling. For subtracting regions, we have a component that's called region difference and it takes two curves into account. The first curve would be our rectangle again, put it to A. And now we have the resulting curves of our scale component, which are our scaled Voronoi polygons with filleted corners. The output is G, so we can connect it to B. Now we did the subtraction, we connect it to a boundary surface component to make a surface out of the result connect this one. And now we see it's not working properly because we operated on different types of data structure. We have this simple list coming into A, which is actually one item. And we have a tree structure coming in where every curve is a data path. So this doesn't work. We have to flatten the input to produce a simple list. It takes some time for Grasshopper to calculate. Good. Now we are nearly finished. Let's produce another slider for the thickness of the whole thing. Let's start with 10 centimeters up to let's say 2 meters. Now let's produce an extrude component taking a y vector and this value as a factor. Now of course we need our final surface to be extruded so we take this and move it over and connect it to the boundary surfaces and now we have a nice extrusion. So, finished. We can bake this out. So this is how to offset Voronoi curves, how to fillet them, how to clean them up a little bit via the Cull Duplicates component. And yeah, doing a region difference operation in the end, keeping in mind that data structures coming in have to be homogeneous and you'll get a result like this.